Warning, the following video might contain some uh, elements that might not be suitable for some viewers. Viewer discussion is advised. The Christmas tree in the town square stood tall for all to look at in awe. The varying reds and blues and yellows and greens coiled around the towering tree like a colorful snake. Children tightly clutched the hands of their mothers and fathers and grind with crooked teeth at the masterful display at the holidays. Its lights, its light cast into onto the empty buildings and lonely streets, emptied by the men and women standing around the spectacle. In the wake of the cheerful holiday smiles, came another surprise. Snow began to fall from the sky, dressing the streets in a growing blanket of sparkling white. However, it didn't flurry, yet not quite a storm. Children stuck their tongues out with a flush with a flushed cheeks, get, cheeks, glittering as a myriad of snowflakes met on them. And for that moment, in the bitter cold, it seemed as though the world revolved, revolved around, only around that tree that stood tall in front of them. But do us, of course. The one and only family within that small town who had decidedly rejected the invitation to be around the others. Alas, the woman was much more content sitting idly in her chair and waiting for information regarding her husband. She had told her child that he had been out working the last few days, trying her best to cover up the fact that, uh, that he had, in fact, gone missing. Now with four days gone by and nothing to show for it... All she could do is stare intently at the static of the television and neglect the, the wilting Christmas tree. The woman barely grasped the half empty bottle of vodka in her hand, and when she heard the pitch patter of, of soft feet, she instantly placed it in the shadows beside her. Her gaze fell on the small boy that sprinted into the, the living room, waving a tiny turquoise blanket back and forth. Mommy! His shrill, his shrill voice cut for the buzz, and she acquired from the alcohol. She went, there's a man with a badge at the door. He said he wants to talk to you. Her daze was immediately broken as she sat upright in the chair, staring at him with a furious rage in her eyes. You open the door? She scolded. The boy stared at her for a moment before looking down, only to be met with a backhand across the face. He sat back, grabbing his red face with tears brewing in his eyes. She stood up, exhaling sharply. I tell you to t tell me first when someone knocks. She sighed in expiration, sobbing out of the living room and hugging the wall for balance as she moved to the front door, opened a crack, deep, uh, opened a crack. Deep in the background, she could hear Frosty the Snowman playing in the boys' room. She shooed her child away, opening the door up enough for her face to be seen. A police officer stood in the snow, fingers in the loops of the, his belt as he greeted her with a grin. She met his grin with a deep frown. What are you doing here so late? Her voice was slurred. Causing the officers to crash into anger. Your husband, his voice was deep but as soft as his expression. We learned a bit more about where he might be. Her expression almost immediately changed. She stepped back, opened the door fully. The officer stepped in, raking his feet across the welcome carpet first as a blast of cold burst into the warm home. She closed the door quickly, shuddering from the bitter weather. Further down the living streets, there was movement in the dark shadows beside the buildings and broken lampposts. A figure walked through the darkness as if it was their home. The hood under his head further failing the little person's face. From view of the dark of the naked eye, the bean walked slowly as if savoring the bitter cold that surrounded him as pitch black boots left prints in the thin blanket of snow. The figure began to speak with the voice of a delicate man. It was a whisper, with the softness of a unfailing lullaby. However, there was a clear malevolence within his undertone. The soft noise sung at a slow pace. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Nobody was around to hear the man's enchanting voice. However, he seemed to enjoy the solitude surrounding him. Under his arm, he created a large cardboard box wrapped haphazardly with a variety of different papers. A substance dribbling from the bottom corner of the box and onto the snow. Through the hue was unseen in the darkness. With the kids jingle bellin and everyone telling you be of good cheer. The shadow of the man suddenly was just was subjected to the dim spectrum of a barely functioning streetlight. Pitch black eyes sparkled against the brightness as his as his pale and sucking in face was shown. However, was the visual was only question for every four as he his troll. A droplet of crimson red sunk into the 
a blanket of white as he passed by the street light. He looked forward to the police cruiser parked in front of the home that he had been traversing through the snow to find. A small grin formed on his features. His self feet cracked against the snowy sidewalk with a purpose as he tried his best to stay within the darkness. Entering closer to the home, eventually he stood at the front of the jury yet moderately we lit up building and at that point he walked up the three concrete stairs continuously saying to himself it's the most wonderful time of the year he placed the back the box down at the top step addressing the large ribbon that had been placed on it he stood up his grin growing from ear to ear as the light washed over his face a large and jagged scar ran from just beside his eye all the way to his uh, lower jawline. He lifted his clenched fist up, wrapping it up, wrapping it on the door a few times. He waited a moment before turning around, quickly slinking back into the shadows before the door was open. The woman had taken her place back in the reclining chair. The officer stood awkwardly as he explained the current situation to her, purposely ignoring the sn snatch of alcohol in her breath and darting his gaze away from her half-closed eyes. She pushed her bottle of vodka back behind a chair as she listened as intently as she could to the lim could could to the man. She nodded slowly. So you found his so you found his car? The officer suddenly nodded, granting her another faint smile. Yes, on the outskirts of the town hitting the trees. He looked away from her fully now and glanced at the Christmas tree that had shed much of its pine needles due to malnourishment. We don't know why it's there or where he ran off to, but it's a start. They have the canine unit sniffing for any abnormal scent right now. The wife took the wife took silence in that knowledge. Her husband possibly being okay was better than the uncertainty she had been facing. As if on cue, the little boy ran out into the living room once again, practically jumping from the balls. Of his feet, I heard, I heard a knock. Mommy, I heard a knock. Mommy, she got, she sat up with a sigh. She sat up with a sigh. I did, I didn't open the door this time, mommy. I promise. She pushed past him, walking down the hallway with a police officer behind her. She opened the door only a crack at first, checking to see if anyone was actually there. She saw no person, but a large gift placed at their doorstep with a raised eyebrow. She. With a raised eyebrow, she opened the door, glancing at glancing to the furious wrapping papers used to wrap around the outside of the box. The officer eyed the present closely behind before his expression changed. Great concern washed over him as he stepped in front of her with a nervous chuckle. L let me open it first. Probably just some pranksters again. He stepped outside, it took out his box cutter, getting onto his knees as he drew in a deep breath. This was. This wasn't the fault of any teenage pranksters he had been in the for force long enough to know exactly what, the, what, what this was. With great caution, he took the ribbon off and tossed it aside, pressing the blade into the wrapping paper and through the top of the box. He ran the, the blade, he ran the, the knife across until he was able to open the top with ease. As he opened it, he drew back quickly, covering his mouth as he fought the urge to vomit. The present happened even worse than he imagined it to be. Curiously, the, w the wife took a look and take a look inside. Her expression distorted into the shock into shock as she let out a blood curdling scream that echoed across the darkness sky. She hugged the wall as the little boy ran to the noise. Mommy, what's wrong? But she didn't respond, suddenly falling to her knees as he sobbed into her hands. The boy placed a small hand onto her shoulder. Mommy? The child moved to take a glance at the concept of present. However, the officer stood up quickly and covered the boy's eyes, drawing him back as he stared inside inside of the box in terror. Inside of the box was a severed head, submerged to the chin in its own pool of blood. The man's hair had been matted with the substance and his eyes were wide, almost alive with terror. His mouth hung open and his face was riddled with cuts and bruises. A scar ran from just to the right of the, his eye, all the way down the, across his cheek to his lower jaw, the jawline. At top of his head was a Santa hat, tainted with travelers of blood. The officer pushed the child back to his mother, who held onto her with a confused expression on his face. The officer barely stood on shaky legs, holding a ripped piece of the wrapping paper and staring at it. It seemed that the bludgeons were, in fact, true. 
He stared at the sticker that had been stuck to the wrapping paper, a still image of Santa waving his mitten to the person looking. To the Fortunate family, from Sirius Nightshade, I'm here. So, that was Red Christmas, a Christmas-themed creepypasta, and... God damn, this is kind of uh, a surprisingly good cr christmas theme cream pasta. You know, like, there's no, like, typical cliches and such. Like, this is, like, a generally pretty eerie, but pretty, but a well-written uh, creepy christmas theme cream pasta story. And Nuzzle, you know, like, it just, like, Nuzzle has, like, a pretty good mystery. Like, uh, who's in that, what person actually does in that, uh, box with that, you know, the separate head of the person that was in box that she belongs to, which I bet it's the father, you know, or the the, the protagonist's uh, husband's head, who most likely has been killed by a person named Sirius Nightshade, which, according to the offer, it, it's his, 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 his or her OC, which I think that's kind of interesting, and I think in the different, uh, and I think in the a different point of view is that he, is that the, the delicate man is my, is Serious Nightshade, which, yeah, you know, the It's a Most Wonderful Time it's of a Year uh, singer. Yeah, that's possibly could have been him, who most likely could be the killer of the the protagonist's uh, husband. And also the the moment with the the present hat of the present being revealed is kind of kind of grossly scary. Yeah, like yeah, I can I can handle like pretty gross up stuff and like horror stuff and some kind of R-rated comedies that have like. Pretty much a gross out, gross out stuff. Sometimes like farts and urine. <laughs> so um, yeah. So I don't have anything else to say. But this is a really well written, uh, but eerie Christmas themed creepy pasta story. So anywho, I just hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Like and comment this video, and subscribe more content. And Merry Christmas as always. So I'll see you guys next year in 2024 when I make brand new videos, so bye-bye!